go. I look crazy and then See this table has like some weird marks on it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a table makeover and not just any table makeover, this is a $5 table that I got from a thrift store. I could not believe it when I asked her how much it was and I saw the little $5 price tag, I thought to myself, this cannot be real. Like there's no way that you just found this table for $5. It is stunning, it's a beautiful, oval very large table it has the claw foot bottom it's the exact same table that i have in my dining room currently but mine i actually painted so if you want to check that video out i will link it below today i'm going to be doing the oven cleaner technique so let's hope for the best i have tried it already on one small furniture piece and i also did it on a mirror i'll link that video below if you want to check it out as well and they actually turned out stunning i love the color that it creates so we're gonna hope that it does the same thing for the dining room table so let's go ahead and get started all right so here's a quick overview of the table before i get started now there are a few things that i wanted to mention right there on the corner of the center leaf you could see that the boards were kind of peeling up and at the time, I didn't notice it until after I started working on the table and sanding it down, and it actually looked really rough. There was also some bubbles in the center that I could not get out. So later on in the video, I do take the table leaf out and just make it into a round table. This is just because I do plan on selling this piece, and I didn't want to have to give myself more work than I had to. So here I have some great value oven cleaner, plastic wrap, two different types of scrubbing brushes and some gloves to wear. It's really important to wear gloves whenever you're working with oven cleaner. Even if it says that it's safe, don't trust it. Wear oven, or wear oven cleaner, <laughs> wear gloves. Um, but I am going to put my gloves on and start spraying down the table so that way it'll be nice and saturated. And I'm gonna leave that sit for about 30 minutes. I got one layer on so far and now I'm just gonna take some plastic wrap and wrap the table so that way it'll stay saturated and I'm gonna leave it sit for a little while. I wish I had known how hard it was gonna be to use this plastic wrap on the table, especially on a windy day. But you know, I was like super hopeful, so I was like, I'll just grab some plastic wrap. Next time I will just grab like a tablecloth or something like that because ultimately all you want to do is just make sure that it doesn't dry out because once it dries out, it stops working as well as it supposed to I believe at least that's what I've researched and found out so just get you a tablecloth <laughs> instead of trying to use plastic wrap I feel like this was such a waste and it would have been so much easier just to throw you know a tablecloth over the top of it I mean I don't even know what I was thinking but it's fine you could see it was already starting to dry out on the center leaf so I had to like re-spray it again also, keep in mind that when you're spraying, you don't want the overspray to get on you or anything else around you. So just pay attention to the way that the wind is blowing and make sure you have everything moved out of your way. Okay. So far, I just did one coat of the oven cleaner and then wrapped the top in saran wrap just to kind of keep it, I guess, moist so it can work longer. I'm going to see how long I can let it sit with before it starts to dry and then I will scrub it and rinse it off. So I decided to work in sections. So what I did was just peel back a little bit of the saran wrap. I dipped my scrubber into some warm soapy water and I'm just scrubbing in a circular motion and back and forth pretty much any direction I can to try to get some of the finish off. And I was shocked at how much it actually pulled up. You can see how nasty the water looks right there on the table. It did a great job at peeling up that 
very shiny finish. However, I do feel like it, it almost, I think it messed up my project in the long run because it ended up being very splotchy, especially towards the end. And the oven cleaner also ate away at the areas of the table leaf that were already messed up, which I didn't anticipate that that would happen. So I ended up having to part with the table leaf altogether just to save me time since this is a piece of furniture that I'm selling. It just, I don't know, it was kind of a bummer, but it was an experiment and now we know I don't recommend using this. I I feel like it's hit or miss. You could possibly ruin a piece of furniture by doing this. Um, and now I realize that because I've used it a little bit more. And I always say, and I, I think this is very important, to not just trust someone on the internet. Like, you shouldn't just trust my opinion. And I, I truly feel like you should do your own research and make an informed decision on your piece of furniture before you dive into it. I'm here just to show you and give you some motivation and maybe some encouragement, but you just never know what's gonna happen with your particular piece of furniture, so keep that in mind. And I watched so many videos on this and everyone else's table turned out beautiful, but mine just was not lifting and doing what everybody else's did. So it was a little bit of a bummer, but now I know and moving forward, I will use the products that are actually meant for this. Also, <laughs> at this point, I was like, you know what? I'm not giving up. I'm going to go ahead and do one more coat. So I did one more coat. This time, I didn't leave it on as long. You can see that the table was already starting to get kind of splotchy in some areas. And this is when I was like, crap, I need to get this stuff off the table like ASAP before I end up messing the whole thing up. Um, and I was really excited about this piece of furniture because I felt like... I don't know. It was like a very unique piece and I got it for five bucks. Like you can't beat that, right? So... I ended up panicking. I took my hose and sprayed it off with water, which I had seen so many other people do online, and theirs turned out just fine. But sometimes people don't tell you the entire story. Like I saw this on an Instagram reel. <laughs> this girl, like, you know, sprayed down this whole dresser. And I was thinking to myself, like, you sprayed a whole dresser with water. But she failed to mention in the video like that she actually dried it off very quickly. I did do that. I took a towel to it. As soon as I sprayed it, I thought, oh, this was stupid. <laughs> and then I took a towel and started drying it off and kind of panicking a little bit because it like dawned on me, well, what if it bubbles? You know, especially now that I have a lot of the, you know, varnish stripped off of it. It I don't know. It was a dumb decision. Don't recommend. Um, and you can see here how it was looking and I was not happy. So I was like, okay, plan B, let's stand this bad boy down. Y'all, I got on my hoodie. <laughs> I got sunglasses I'm fixing to put on and I got my face mask so I don't get this dust or anything in my hair or on my body. <laughs> but at least it's gonna, should work. I'm going to put my face mask right over top of this. <laughs> Alright, I'm good to go. I look crazy and then the, the trash guy's fix it and come around. He's going to think I'm nuts. But you know, oh well. Are you kidding me? Oh, my battery died. All right, so this is where I'm at so far with the table. Um, I've gotten a majority of it sanded down. I still have to work on the sides. Oh, that's so pretty. It's so pretty? Yeah. Well, thank you. There's a few spots that I'm a little concerned with. So right here, um, I'm assuming this is water damage from like water just sitting on the table. Y'all can see that I rinsed off the table, but I dried it really well afterwards so that way it wouldn't mess up. Um, but I think that this is some water damage that had been sitting, must have been sitting outside for a while, but it's okay. I'll make it work. I'm sure it'll still be pretty, but I still have a lot of sanding to do, but the bottom I am gonna paint a solid white and then I'll stain the top. And then I personally decided to go ahead and take the table leaf out because the table leaf is really, really damaged. You can see right here on the side. 
Um, down here, there's also some more damage down here. Do y'all see that? And you can see it's on all four corners. And there's also some bubbles in this one. So it's gonna take a lot more sanding. And since this is a furniture flip, I feel like it's not worth my time to keep trying to I'm out of breath, so don't mind me. But I've sanded down the table, I think as good as I can get it. If I go any deeper, it's gonna start getting into that, um, I don't know, like particle board looking stuff. So this is the stain color I'm using. It is called Roanoke, I think, Roanoke. Anyway, you can see it right there, that's what I'm using. So I'm gonna try it out in a, like a hidden area just to make sure it's the color I want before I start lathering it on. Oh, it's really dark. Wow. Okay. So let's just try this. Okay. So I'm going to actually try this on the side here and just see how it looks. Okay. No. That turns it right back into the color that it was. <laughs> That's not going to work. That's not going to work. At this point, I'm playing around with a few different options, and the one that I liked the most was more of like a gray wash. It really just kind of balanced out the yellow tones that this table tends to pull towards. So I took this Valspar Antique and Glaze. I applied that very like roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect, so I just applied that with a paintbrush, you know, really buffing it into all of the grooves of the wood. And then I took a stain color called Driftwood. It's like a really light gray, but it's not dark enough. If you apply it just to like the wood color, it kind of just makes it look like nothing's there. But applying it to the top of that Valspar Antique and Glaze, it is a beautiful, beautiful color. It's like a wood gray color. I don't know. I, I loved it. So that's what I ended up going for for the entire table. I did notice though that it was taking too long to apply with a paintbrush, so I end up switching to an old t-shirt in just a moment. And once again, I just buff in that Valspar Antique Glaze and go right on top of that with the Driftwood color, and it just made a really pretty finish. At this point, you can see right here on the table, it's already very splotchy, and I knew that was going to happen just based off of the, you know, condition of this table. I am assuming that this table was left outside in the weather just due to the wear and tear of it. But in the end, it did turn out beautiful. It's very unique. It looks worn and old. And at the end of the day, I think that's a style that's really in right now. And hopefully we'll continue to stay in because I love creating furniture like this. But you know, it's all about personal preference. If you don't like a rustic look, I would definitely recommend just painting a table like this because you are you just never know what's gonna happen. Like you can see right there to the right hand side how the table is very rough looking. And if I tried to sand it down any more, I was gonna start getting to that particle board finish and you just don't wanna do that. So you can only sand down so much of the top of this table.
So I let the tabletop dry overnight and now I'm going to go ahead and paint the base of the table. I'm going to be using this Onyx Black in the Colorplace brand. This paint is from Walmart. It's also a flat finish so that way it works very sim similar to the way that chalk paint works. Um, I have done this multiple times and I've even done this for my kitchen table that I have currently and it is held up beautifully. If you want to check out that video, I'll link it below um, and I use it daily in my house. I feel like flat paint works very similar to chalk paint. The only difference is that it's a lot thinner. So it's just, you know, chalk paint is very thick and I feel like, I don't know, sometimes it's hard to work with, but with this flat paint using just regular paint, it's very smooth. You just have to do a few more coats. So it just really depends on your preference. I don't mind doing a few coats. I actually really enjoy painting. Okay, so this is where I'm at. I've gotten one coat of the black paint on the base and this is how the top looks up close it's got like a gray wash with some brown poking through so it's kind of like antiqued a little bit but i really really love the gray or not the gray <laughs> the black base and i think it'll look even better without the gray underneath there it just kind of throws off the colors a little bit okay so i am just finishing up this second coat and I just wanted to tell you guys that this is like extremely peaceful. Like hearing the birds chirp and just, I don't know. It's just, this is like an escape for me. I, I love painting. <laughs> Some people find it like super annoying and frustrating, but it's something I truly enjoy. It just makes me feel, I don't know. Like I'm escaping from all the chaos in the world. The very last step for any project is sealing it. And I always use a polycrylic. I typically like to use either a satin finish or the clear matte. Today I'm going in with the clear matte and I have two different sponges here. Well, I have one sponge and one paintbrush. I ended up just using the paintbrush the whole time. Now, I do this probably a little different than some. You can dip your paintbrush in. I find that it's easier just to pour it on and just quickly spread it out. I've been doing this for a while and this is just the technique that I use. I also do this outside and make sure that if I get drips anywhere, it's not gonna hurt anything or just make sure you have like a, an old shirt or old, uh, what was I gonna say, sheet or even like a tablecloth from Dollar Tree just to protect the ground. But I'm doing it on my driveway so it's not that big of a deal. It's just poly, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, and I just apply that in a very thin coat, the first layer, and then the more coats I add, the more durable it's gonna be and the longer it's gonna last. This is the exact same clear coat that I used on my kitchen table. Like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna check that video out, um, I'll have it linked below. And this table has held up wonderfully. I've even used the polycrylic on my kitchen island and I can use pretty much any cleaner I want. Over time, the finish will wear away, so you might have to like reapply it. But you know, I feel like for the price and how easy it is to work with, I really enjoy it. By the way, right here is where I made a mistake. Um, I thought, okay, so this poly says it's clear matte, but it did not clear, it did not dry in a clear matte finish. It actually dried in a um, satin finish, I would say. So the base went from being a matte black, which I loved right here, and then it turned into like a shiny finish. It's not that big of a deal, but it was kind of a bummer because I really liked the way it looked matte. You can see how smooth and beautiful the paint dried. And that's why I love just using flat paint. I think it works really well. But here's a quick before and after of the table. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. It was not my best project, but it was definitely an experiment. And for $5, I think I was able to really transform this into a beautiful piece. And hopefully I'll make a pretty good profit on it. All right, but that's going to be it for today's video. Y'all will have to let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, also, I'm really curious on if I made, if y'all think I made a good decision painting the base black, or do you think it would look better white? I just tend to gravitate towards white. I'm trying to kind of get out of my comfort zone a little bit, um, but I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Thank you guys for being here, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, y'all.